Hello and welcome to another standard game to video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-green artifact aggro deck featuring four copies of Vanifar Evolved Enigma, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. Vanifar is a 4-mana 3-4, saying at the beginning of combat on our turn, either a cloak a card from our hand, meaning we turn it face down as a 2-2 creature with Ward 2, that's colorless, and if it's a creature we can turn it face up at any time by paying its mana cost, or we can put a plus one plus one counter on each colorless creature we control. So there's a few ways we can build around Vanifar. One maybe involves cloaking some expensive permanent and then flickering it to essentially get it face up again at a huge mana discount. And that's certainly a deck we'll explore in the future. But for now we're mainly focusing on that second effect of putting a plus one counters on colorless creatures. So Vanifar will slot perfectly in this low curve aggro deck where we're playing a bunch of colorless artifact creatures. And another card that will synergize very well with Vanifar is Ozolith as we now get two plus one counters on our entire our team with Vanifar's ability. Then one of our few non-colorless cards is Teething Wormlet, which will still work very well with all our artifacts as it can pick up extra counters and gain life. And then our artifact creatures include Ginger Brute as a nice evasive threat in the late game. We've got Iron Apprentice, can maybe move its counters if it dies to another creature. And then at 2 mana there's the Patchwork Automaton, which also grows whenever we cast an artifact spell. Also works pretty well alongside Ozolith. And then a Surge Engine can also turn into an unblockable creature, and also a nice mana sink in the grindier matchups. And then we also have the full set of Halo Hopper, which we can quickly convoke by tapping some of our untapped creatures, so we can quickly get all these colorless creatures on the battlefield to benefit from Vanifar. And then uh, two copies of Simeon Simulacrum can also be unearthed under the graveyard to give us more plus one counters. And then a Zoetic Glyph can turn one of our artifacts into a 5-4, and then even when dealt with we'll still get to discover three. So this can be a nice way to increase the power and toughness on a Ginger Brute. It also plays quite well with an Iron Apprentice or Patchwork Automaton, since the plus one counters will still stack on top of the 5-4 stats. And then of course we've got the full set of Vanifar, and sometimes we can also start cloaking cards from our hand if we're low on creatures on the battlefield, and then we can go for the plus one counters afterwards. And then a mana base also has another artifact creature, Mishra's Foundry, not to be underestimated, especially alongside Vanifar's ability, can turn into a significant threat as well. And then we've got some blue-green lands for mana fixing, and then Boseju and Odawara for additional interaction. I'll mention some other cards we could potentially include in the archetype at the end of the video. But for now, let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Facing a red-green, turn one Kumano. Ooh, nice Ozolith, a great follow-up to a turn one Wormlet, as it will immediately pick up two plus one counters. And then Ozolith, also very nice alongside Vanifar. Iconoclast enters with a plus one counter. Okay, I think we stick to the plan with Ozolith, and then next turn we can kind of unload a few creatures. And technically Wormlet could hold off the etching here. Don't really want to trade for Iconoclast since Wormlet's gonna keep on growing. Alright, Stormseeker, so can pump itself or can pump etching and we'll take seven. Another Wormlet, okay. So now we're looking at Wormlet plus Surge Engine and then I could convoke Halo Hopper, although that leaves us kind of vulnerable. So I think I just prefer Wormlot Surge Engine. Set up our defenses. And this way we also don't miss out on any plus one counters on the Wormlot. So this sort of implies maybe a Monstrous Rage or a Burn Spell to finish off my creatures. So, I guess we'll force the issue, block Iconoclast, and see what they've got. Yeah, Monstrous Rage, so take two Trample. That's fine. And now I could play Venifar, could even uh, convoke Halo Hopper, and then go for plus one counters. It's a little bit risky, since um, I would only have the one blocker back, but we also gain life back from Wormlet. 
I guess a more conservative play would be Vanifar cloak the card from my hand, but then we don't trigger Wormlet. Yeah, I kind of still like playing Vanifar here. And then we've got two colorless creatures to pick up more counters, and those will be doubled by Ozolith as well. And the Ginger Brute next turn. The Cherry on top can also activate Ozolith. I will be blocking. Although if it's just etching attacking, how do we die? Two cards in hand, most burn spells only deal three damage. Next turn we could certainly present lethal. So maybe I just take it. They'll switch to nighttime. So we're definitely playing Ginger Brute. Might want to activate Surge Engine. And activate Ozolith. Yeah, I think we're playing out Soaring City. Even though if I channel it now, we can bounce their only blocker. Surge Engine doesn't get to attack, we get counters. So that's 3 plus 7 is 10. So that would be lethal if they have nothing. Let's say they have a removal spell. Then they get to replay Slasher. And that could be kind of bad. And I'll just play this. And then we want to activate Ozolith. Can do so on maybe Ginger Brute. So that if they try and kill it, I can still sack it to gain 3. And then go to attackers, trigger Vanifar, get plus one counters. Once that resolves, I can still activate Surge Engine. Okay. So now if I were to attack with everyone, what happens? Let's assume our opponent has a Witchstalker Frenzy, kind of the worst case scenario. They could kill a Ginger Brute. So we could go all out, but maybe just to be safe, I'll keep Vanifar back. All right, it's going to be a defensive Monstrous Rage. That's acceptable. So we still trade. Points at one, and we've got a blocker back. So yeah, a few ways we could have approached that turn to guarantee lethal, but we're not in a bad spot, and our opponent explodes. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand's a little awkward with Cascade being our second land. So we either play tapped or hope to just draw another land along the way. But uh, yeah, I think we still keep it. Facing the red-white Convoke deck, it seems. Alright, land is good. So it's not like Ginger Brute can attack into the Warden, so may as well play the Apprentice. And then the evasion on Ginger Brute could be key, especially when paired with a Zoatic Glyph. Putin might be holding a reinforcement, so going double Ginger Brute here is not gonna work out too well for me. So instead I'll just uh, play Surge Engine, attack for one. If they had reinforcements we can at least move the counter onto Surge Engine. So no reinforcements means our opponent's off to a slower start. And now War Leader's Call to bump up their team. Okay, so Zoate Glyph is certainly an option here. Or I can wait to put it on Ginger Brute. And then for now just go double Ginger Brute Apprentice and smash. Or maybe just double Ginger Brute activate Surge Engine. I like that more. And then next turn I have the option of putting Glyph on a Ginger Brute while also activating it. So we can attack past any blockers. Opponent's at 11. So Glyph on Ginger Brute, hit for 8 unblockable. So we've got him on a 2 turn clock essentially. Then we can maybe sack the other Ginger Brute to gain 3 life. So we'll stick to the plan.
Thalia is fine. Do they also have a recruiter here? They do. All right, that's a bit more damage coming across, but I'm happy to chum block with two of my creatures. Are we still dead? Chump, chump, take 12, so we fall to one. And we get to move a plus one counter as well. All right. And a Soul Cauldron, also pretty synergistic with a Ginger Brute in the graveyard. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. And uh, yeah, this hand would certainly improve with another cheap creature to help convoke Halo Hopper. But uh, I'll try it. Halo Hopper is good alongside Vanifar as we can quickly deploy them so they can pick up plus one counters. Opponent mono blue, so can expect a few counter spells. For now, maybe go with Surge Engine. So that can also make it easier to convoke Hopper in the future. And Surge Engine is also a good mana sink, so it helps us play around counter spells. Opponent with a moment of truth. Keeps up three mana. So I can't really double spell with a hopper yet. So what are we thinking? I guess I could just play a Simulacrum to be mana efficient, even though Ozolith first could provide a bit more value. I think I just put the counters on itself. So it can attack into a Hottie Djinn. Surge Engine can become unblockable. Okay, so go with Vanifar, hope that resolves, and then I can still convoke Hopper. And uh, I need to play Soaring City. That works. Convoke. And then we'll get three plus one counters here, hopefully. Not bad. Next turn, we can play Ozolith, so we get two plus one counters from Vanifar's ability. And maybe animate a Mishra's Foundry as well, although Flow of Knowledge will see the opponent a lot of cards. Discards double spell pierce. And attacks for six, so that kind of implies that they have a blue march to phase out a bunch of our creatures. So with that knowledge, do we change any of our sequencing? I guess I can um, potentially still sneak an attack in with the Mishra's Foundry. I would still want to play Ozolith. And then we can also maybe activate Surge Engine. Looks like our opponent's gonna go for it now. Alright, that resolves. So, decision time. I still want to, to cast the uh, Blue March, so if I tap too many creatures to convoke Halo Hopper, they're not going to be forced to anymore. So instead of playing Ginger Brute here, I can maybe wait for the Vanifar trigger to go on the stack. If our opponent phases out my team in response, I can still activate Foundry, and then Foundry might pick up two plus one counters, and if not, we can uh, reevaluate. That resolves. So could activate Surge Engine. And then we might see them phase out. Just a slip out the back, okay. And then we can still play a Ginger Brute. So we did miss out on a little bit of damage from Ginger Brute not attacking. And a Zoetic Glyph is interesting too. So now I can at the very least gain 3 off Ginger Brute, so I don't necessarily die on the way back, but they can likely cast a few more spells. So, yeah, I guess we go to attackers and then see what happens. Mm, 
And there it is. So we can still play Halo Hopper. Keep two mana available. Can they fill the graveyard some more? They cannot. So we're at two. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. Very close one here against Mono Blue. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. And uh, double Dream Root Cascade not doing us any favors here. That being said, our hand has potential. Ozolith is pretty good with our cheap creatures and with Vanifar. So Antiglyph has a few creatures to enchant. So I'll give it a shot. All right, that's a bit better. And uh, could Ozolith first, so Apprentice picks up an extra counter. Sure. Upside of playing Apprentice first is that we can immediately enchant it with a Zoetic Glyph. Could also activate Ozolith instead here. But our plan next turn is going to be to deploy Vanifar and get counters. So I want to have as many creatures in play as possible. And then if we draw a different land, we can maybe hang on to Boseju. Could be important removal for, let's say, an ossification. For now, borrow time. Goes after Ozolith. All right, so how do we want to play this? Could just Zoetic Glyph hang on to Buseju for a turn, or I can play Vanifar and give up on Ozolith, and then we can still make a decent attack. The concern is that we're going to run out of artifacts to enchant with Zoetic Glyph if our opponent does accept a trade for Ginger Brute. So maybe it is just Zoetic Glyph here. And they would need to remove the enchantment for Discover not to trigger. If they exile Ginger Brute, we still Discover. Catilda, that's a good one. Engrossed with a number of enchantments. And Audacity on Naturalist, gaining four. Wormlet the draw. So, can uh, Zoetic Glyph the Apprentice now too? Although this is not a race we're winning against two Life Linkers, so I kind of need to hit the brakes. Could of course boost Seiju the Naturalist, which also shrinks down Catilda. And then just play Wormlet for now. Yeah, maybe that's worth it. And then by removing two enchantments, Catilda down to a 2-2, so Apprentice can actually trade for it. Alright, let's go with a sneaky play. Opponent going for a block on Ginger Brute. So yeah, blowing up Naturalist. Shrinks down Catilda. And all of a sudden the board looks a lot better. So hanging on to Boseju paid off. And our opponent's still at 18, so we've got a long way to go. And they've got a pretty big mana advantage. For now Weaver. They have a basic to deploy Ossification and a Reign of Truth. So yeah, doubled Ossification with Weaver next turn is going to be quite painful. But all we can do is turn our creatures sideways, I guess. Maybe Glyph on the Apprentice and attack for what would be 12 damage. Another Wormlet probably doesn't change the equation too much. Opponent's at 6. So I'm expecting double ossification here. But at least we'll get to discover with the Zoetic Glyph. 
All right, never mind. Opponent going for a disturbed Catilda. So that's nine power lifelink. Also pretty good. Opponent can go back up to 15. And a Halo Hopper is not quite enough since we would grow Wormlets and then 12, 13, 14. So one damage short. Had we drawn a land for Vanifar, then we would have had just enough. Now what I can do, of course, is play another Wormlets, Convoke Halo Hopper. And then we'll gain two life up to nine. And hopefully that's enough to at least stay alive. Could also keep up the Ginger Brute's life gain ability. But that means giving up an entire attack, so I don't think that's worth it. Alright, points at one. Let's see what happens. If they stay back to play defense, we can activate Ginger Brute to sneak past their Weaver. Calyx, yeah, that's two extra power. So if they have one more enchantment, we're dead. Which seems likely. And a wedding announcement. Alright, GG's. So yeah, just needed a land for Vanifar, and we would have had it. So the margins were super close. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play, and uh, this hand would be pretty good with an untapped blue-green land instead, but I'm still going to keep. Play a tap land so we can go Wormlet plus maybe a Ginger Brute here. Opponent might be on a Domain deck, which is a deck Packing four copies of Sunfall, which is one of the better cards against us. Alright, gonna need to play Boseju as a land instead of keeping it for an enchantment. And then Zoetic Glyph is an option. I think I still prefer just going Engine plus Apprentice or Engine Activate. Wormlet only picks up one counter per turn, so I think we prefer activating Engine. And then next turn I can maybe use a Glyph if I don't draw land and still attack with a Surge Engine. Oof, temporary lockdown. Yeah, not a card you typically see out of the Domain decks. But uh, pretty effective here, as it turns out. So I could just go Vanifar, Cloak, Apprentice. So that Glyph is not going to have any targets outside of maybe Mishra's Foundry is a problem. So it could also get rid of the Zoetic Glyph, but if I top deck a Ginger Brute, it might still work out. Opponent passes. Is this a Wandering Emperor, maybe? So a few ways we can play it. I think we animate Mishra's Foundry times two. Could also pump the Mishra's Foundry, but I think we prefer getting counters on the other one. So let me go to Attackers. Trigger on the stack, and then activate Foundry. So that picks up an extra counter. And then if I attack all out and they Wandering Emperor me, how sad are we? Get rid of Venifar. We're still left with face down card and a pair of 3 3 foundries. And then at some point, I could also turn this back into an apprentice and put a Zoetic Glyph on it, I guess. Yeah, I guess we'll go for it. They might just be setting up Sunfall for next turn anyway. In which case, they maybe want to Wandering Emperor the Mishra's Foundry. This could also be a Leyline Binding for 3 mana. Opponent takes it all, falls to six, and herd migration will gain three. So yeah, I'm assuming Sunfall is incoming, and our window to close out the game 
is also closing. Ooh, Sorting City. Get back Wormlet Brute Search Engine, but our opponent also gets Lockdown back. So is it even helpful? Probably not so much. I can turn my phase down card face up, have a 2-2 Apprentice, put a Zoetic Glyph on it. I think I'm just going to be better off attacking with a pair of Mishra's Foundries. So if I play my land, I can attack with both. So, trigger on the stack. Animate. And that's enough for a concession. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Missing blue mana. Once we find blue mana, our hand's pretty solid. I'll try it out. Up against the Monorad aggro. So Wormlet's one of our better tools. And then turn to Automaton. Scoundrel enters with a counter. Does it also enter with a roll token? Nope, makes a treasure. So we could still lose the Wormlet here. Another Wormlet. So what's going to go with Automaton? Now I'm preferring Wormlet plus Apprentice. And then next turn we can Automaton plus Apprentice. Alright, that resolves. And then since I'm not planning to trade my Wormlet, I may as well attack with it. Alright, turn 3 Godric would be pretty effective, especially with the etching of Kumano. And there it is, at least they had to sack a treasure, but it does mean their hand is all spells. So the problem now is with etching, if we block with Apprentice, it gets exiled, so we don't get to move the plus one counter. So I'll just take it for now. But the life game from Wormlet's going to be very important. So yeah, play Automaton, play Apprentice. And these two can attack. Might end up jumping with an apprentice anyway. And at the very least I can animate Mitra's Foundry next turn. Monster's Rage Godric, so it also flies. Alright, that's a decent chunk of damage. So, what if I just trade Automaton for Etching? So my apprentices can actually move their counters around in the future. I don't have another artifact in hand to enable this anyway. And this has me taking 11 down to 4. I don't have any more life gain coming up. So that's a little sketchy. Opponents at 12 themselves. So let's say I take it all. I'm attacking back for... Uh, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Never mind, I can just take it and attack with Foundry. And this is only 13. Okay. Out aggroing Monorad Aggro. Yavimaya Coast is even better than animating Foundry. Has me going down to 1. But, uh... Yeah, just animating Foundry would have done it too. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, and uh, this hand could be great if we get to 4 mana for Venifar, with all these creatures on the battlefield already. So we'll give it a shot. Another Automaton. So for now, I guess Ginger Brute over Apprentice. Since we're likely going to tap the Apprentice for Convoke the turn we play it. 
Put on green white with a bunny corn. That land is good. So play automaton. Offer the trade. And then next turn we can play automaton, apprentice, and halo hopper. Setting up for a very big Vanifar if we can land it. Another automaton. Alright. So it's going to be very important to draw land next turn. I don't know if the ward from Automaton is super relevant in this matchup. It's probably just going to be a race. But yeah, we've got a lot of stuff in play. Problem is Bunny Corn can probably grow even faster than Automaton. So we need Vanifar to keep up. And reinforcements, yep, that's two more creatures. And our opponent hangs back. Alright, no land, but a Wormlet. At least that has Death Touch, so lines up okay against Bunny Corn. And, uh, yeah, I mean, we could offer the trade for Automaton. Don't hate that. If they just want to trade for a single Bunny Corn, that's fine. If they want to double block, that's fine too. Gonna see a Trump instead, even better. Opponent is playing red as well, not too surprising. Probably four cards like Recruiter. Epicure maybe to set up the uh, Goblin tokens. And yeah, both of these providing two permanents for Bunny Core, now a 7-7. And another Automaton. Well, we drew our full playset. Would have preferred a land, but I'll, I'll take it, I guess. Yeah, I don't think our opponent's deck is playing any removal whatsoever, so the ward doesn't do anything for us. But we can activate Ginger Brutes. At least get in for one. Could also send in Wormlets. And if that trades for Bunny Corn, fine. If they want to block with three smaller creatures, that's fine too, since that'll shrink down the bunny corn. So at this point, a Zoetic Glyph on Ginger Brute could sort of break the board stall. And land for Vanifar would provide a lot of plus one counters. So we've got a lot of good top decks. Any artifact still grows Automaton. Another Wormlet at least will have Death Touch, so doesn't leave many terrible top decks. War Leader's Call, and a land finally. Time for Vanifar to shine. And that's enough for a concession. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and uh, yeah, I'll keep this. Could use an extra one mana creature to help enable Convoke on Halo Hopper. And so we have more stuff in play by the time we deploy Vanifar. But we can still maybe play Venifar and Convoke Hopper in the same turn. Well, let's see what we're up against. A red. And a turn one Kumano. Alright, at least Automaton is going to be a little bit more protected from burn spells taking it out. Ozolith could be a great addition here with Venifar. And at 4 toughness, Venifar is also not the easiest to take out for red. For now, 2 power Phoenix Chick. And a Zoetic Glyph could also put that on Automaton. I think I prefer playing Simulacrum for now. Counters on Automaton. And now we could play Defense, although Monstrous Rage can still punish us blocking the uh, etching. So I'll get in. And then we'll have to wait and see for opponent attacks with the etching. If we block with Simulacrum, we also don't get to unearth it since it gets exiled. And that also makes our Venifar a bit worse. So it's probably still better to take it for now. 
and then really hope to draw lane so we can play Vanifar plus maybe convoke Halo Hopper. So yeah, I'll take it. Alright, we drew the lane so we could do the thing if we want to. And then the question is, do we convoke Halo Hopper or do we just go for counter's attack? Could even potentially cloak a card with Vanifar to get a bigger board presence and then still convoke Halo Hopper. So let's say we go for plus one counters now, then Automaton plus a Malacrum attack for a total of eight damage, put opponent to eight, and then next turn we can present lethal. I would have one blocker back, so pretty safe to survive their incoming attack. Alternatively, if I convoke Halo Hopper, we don't get in for any damage this turn, but then we're getting more damage for next turn. We would have a 4-3 back on defense. Once again, pretty likely to survive an incoming attack. And then I guess we also get to grow the automaton in the meantime. And then next turn also Lith can potentially close out the game for us by giving two plus one counters with Vanifar. So yeah, a few ways we can approach it here. But I'm not hating the Halo Hopper Convoke. And then go for plus one counters. Convoke Hopper and Cloak the Zoatic Glyph, for instance. Also pretty reasonable just to have an extra blocker back. But uh, let's go big with the plus one counters instead. Scoundrel make a treasure, so... Is this a Witch Docker Frenzy? Remove Halo Hopper. That's fine. So we take seven. So a few ways we can present lethal, either animating Foundry or uh, I guess casting also Lith can do it too. This is probably more damage. Yeah, a lot of options with Vanifar, especially when we can also convoke a Hopper in the same turn. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with what looks like a keepable hand. Ginger Brood Beatdown. And then we can eventually put Zoetic Glyph on them as well. Next turn we could maybe Convoke Hopper. So our hand is starting to dry out a little bit. Vanifar would be a welcome sight. Opponent on the domain deck, and they don't quite have a one mana binding since they're missing blue, so it is still relatively safe to Zoetic Glyph. So I think we go for it while we can. Because I don't want them to remove my target in response, because then Zoetic Glyph doesn't let us discover. Now, even if they exile Ginger Brute, I still get to discover three. Opponents with a herd migration. That's acceptable. So up to 13. They still don't have one mana binding available. We can attack with the Mishra's Foundry. 8, 9, 10, 11. And play Wormlets. And we don't have to worry about Sunfall. Next turn at least. Okay. Let's see what they've got. Archangel doesn't do it since we can just make Ginger Brute unblockable. Or we could have uh, bounced Archangel with Soaring City, but we'll keep it simple. And our opponent explodes. Sweet. And we get to rank up here as well. All right. So blue green artifacts with the Vanifar. A pretty sweet archetype, especially in best of one, where you can play these more streamlined aggressive decks without having to worry too much about the opponent bringing in a ton of removal or sweeper effects. Of course, sweepers remain a weak point of this deck, especially for off to a slower start, 
cards like Sunfall can be quite devastating, especially if we uh, rely on cards like Vanifar to build up our team, then a Sweeper is going to be even more painful. But on the flip side, we can also get those faster games with cards like Zoetic Glyph turning a 1-1 into a 5-4. Then we can uh, quickly apply pressure and we don't need to overextend. Now there's still a few other cards you could try in the archetype, maybe a one-off Soul Cauldron to grant the Ginger Brute or Surge Engine's abilities to the entire team, assuming they end up in the graveyard, can be very nice if there's a board stall in the grindier matchups. And then you could also try a Cryptic Coat from the new set as an artifact that still enables your artifact synergies, but it still comes attached to a face-down cloaked creature, which is colorless, so it will still synergize with Vanifar quite well. And then you could also try the Gadgeteer if you want to go for a slower approach where you generate more card advantage, but you're maybe giving up too much if you replace Zoetic Glyph, since the Glyph can give you those more explosive starts, but it is still an option, and there's a few activated abilities you can discount with a Gadgeteer, including, of course, the clue tokens. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.